I was in Afghanistan uh, the week of October 13th. Well, that's when the traveling started. I actually it was you know, about two days of traveling to actually get to Kabul. I was there to look at the rule of law efforts. Uh, on the ground in Kabul, but also primarily to follow uh, a fairly new rule of law program um, that is funded largely by private law firms. Uh, some delegates from that program, which is called the Public-Private Partnership for Justice Reform in Afghanistan, were going to Kabul to sort of check out the situation on the ground. They hadn't been there before, kind of see the problem firsthand that they're dealing with so they can you know, better understand how to sort of target and focus the programs that they're designing here. As an American visiting and seeing everything from behind the bulletproof glass of an armored, you know, black, uh, Blackwater chaperoned uh, SUV, it's impossible to get a true read on the culture and the people there because you cannot really interact with them. The Western idea of a formal court where a judge says, you're right, you're wrong, you know, you pay this and, you know, we go on our way is just very foreign to a lot of the country and that is uh, absolutely the number one hurdle to any sort of Western rule of law effort there. The whole country is divided up by mountains. It's uh, been described to me by several people as a valley to valley culture. Um, because it's so segregated, uh, you know, individual cultures, individual kind of tribal cultures have, uh, have developed in their own parts of the country and within these different ethnic groups uh, are different kind of rules. So it's hard. I mean, it's hard to target target an entire country and blanket it with one consistent effort, especially a country that is divided into so many different cultures the way that Afghanistan is. As a woman born and raised in the United States, I was struck immediately by the burqa. Perhaps the, the man they're walking alongside is dressed in totally Western attire, you know, cargo shorts, a polo shirt, just like a you know, guy you'd see here, while the woman looks so completely different. I mean, she's veiled head to toe in her burqa. Um, to me, it just, it just struck me as such an inequality that it was a little bit you know, gut-wrenching. So uh, I had to remind myself not to pass judgment. It's a culture that you know, is not my own. I can say that I have a great amount of respect for the Americans who live and work on the U.S. Embassy compound because it is certainly not the lap of luxury by any means. The American workers who, who live there live in these tiny, um, they look like shipping containers. I think they actually are shipping containers that have just been fitted with you know, a bed and a toilet and a sink. Um, and they, that's where they live. They're, they refer to them as hooches. It's a small, maybe 200 square feet at best, living space. Um, and then you walk out of your hooch and you're totally surrounded by high walls, razor wire. You can't really even tell where you are. The cafeteria is a whole nother story. I mean, the food is not great. One entree per day and that's what you get. And, if you don't like it, maybe the cook will whip you up a grilled cheese, but other than that, it's pretty minimal. We had an opportunity to go to uh, an American military base that hosts a, a bazaar every Friday, that's their one weekend day there, um, where they invite the Afghan vendors who sell their goods at the, the local Kabul bazaars inside the military compound to hold a bazaar there where it's uh, safer for Americans to shop. So that was my one chance to sort of interact with the Afghan people. Um, I met one boy who was a painter, he was self-taught. His work was amazing and this kid had not had access to, you know, the luxuries that an American child would have, you know, no painting school, no workbooks, nothing like that. Uh, just sort of his own, his own will to do, to do what he was doing and I, um, I really was surprised and, and touched by that. So I thought that that was a, a great memory to take away uh, with me from the trip.